And we're going to do a little bit shorter class on modern halacha. Since last week we talked about the great prophetess Miriam, I saw a fascinating question posed to Rabbi Vadi Yosef Yechaved Da'at, Chelek Shlishi, Teshuvah Ein Bet. The question is, must we respect the rabbits and the rabbi's wife with the sm- same amount of respect as the rabbi? We know when the rabbi comes into the shul, you have to stand in front of him, you have to call him by his title, you can't call him uh, Yosef or Moshe, you have to call him Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Moshe. And also, so the question here is, is that the rabbi's wife or a female Torah scholar, let's say there's a woman like Nechama Lebovitz, she was a very, very um, wise, proficient, knowledgeable woman in the Tanakh, or your Mo- Mora, or your principal of the Bet Yaakov, Beis Yaakov. Basically, the rabbi's wife, female Torah scholars, female Torah teachers, must, all the laws that we have to respect, Talmidei Chachamim and Rabbanin, must we respect them also? And also, do we have to um, get up in front of, we know mitnes Vatakum is a mitzvah to get up also in front of elders. The Arizal and Ben Ishchai says elders is 60. The Gemara says 70. So let's say there's a 60 or 70 year old woman that comes into the room. Do you have to respect them like your grandmother? So Rabbi brings a very beautiful thing. And it's a very interesting thing. Now I just want to say that um, we do not believe in female rabbis, but Rabbi clearly in this Teshuvah holds that the rabbi's wife and female Torah scholars that teach Torah to women are very precious as important and equally must be respected like why? Because the Gemara, there's a Gemara in Shavuot that says Sherav Nachman, Rav Nachman, one of the great, great Talmudic scholars, the Amoraim, when the wife of Rav Huna came into the room, he stood up completely, got out of his seat, and accorded respect to the wife of Rav Huna. Why? This is a very important concept to understand. The wife of a Talmud Haham, of the Rav, is equally as precious and important, exactly like the Rav. And this brings me to a very beautiful idea that we know that there's a concept called Ishtoke Gufu. Your wife is just like you. And this is not some fluffy, unpractical, abstract idea. The Rishonim, the Tosefot, the Ran, and the Ramban, they say this idea that the wife of the rabbi is exactly like the rabbi is based on the idea that a man and woman, when they get married, they're one unit. No difference. So just like you have to respect and stand up, parenthetically, many people make a mistake. They want to show... They do the mitzvah, but they don't do the mitzvah appropriately. The rabbi, some people, they're ab- absolutely drunk. A Talmid Chacham, a rabbi that is much greater than them in Torah knowledge, or is their Torah teacher, they, some people, they don't get up altogether, which is very foolish, like the Gemara and Makot says, but some people, they, um, they just move a little, which is called Hidur. That Rovavadya clearly brings down many places is not the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to get up completely like this. Hidur is if two Torah scholars are on an equal... Two people have the same amount of knowledge, so just to a little bit respect, they move a little bit. To make, make believe like they're getting up, but they don't actually get up. So, this is a fascinating concept that... The uh, wife of the rabbi, since she's considered part and parcel 
like one entity as the rabbi, even if the rabbi is not present when she comes into the room, uh, that's why they call the rabbi's wife Rebetzin, you have to get up in front of her, like Rav Nachman did for the wife of Rav Huna. And this is not even a rabbinical law, this is a Torah law. Now, so Rav Avadia brings a very interesting uh, logic. He says, let's say the, fem- the, the in olden times women weren't so educated because they didn't go to Bet Yaakov, there was no Torah institution. So let's say the wife of the rabbi is not so knowledgeable. So the whole reason you're getting up for her is what? Just because of her husband. So for sure, a woman that spent hundreds and thousands of hours dwelling into the Torah, and especially she's a principal of a Jewish school, or she's a teacher, she's a professor of the Torah, and she teaches the pure, true Torah, the unadulterated and unchanged, the authentic Torah, that she should be respected because she has um, sweated, put sweat and tears on her own accord in order to be connected and understand and teach and spread the light of Torah. So this, Rav Avadia says, it says you could argue on this logic. Why? Because the answer is very simple. Women are not obligated really to study Torah. Like they don't study Talmud. The only Torah they need to study is to be able to carry out the, their mitzvot. But like to study Talmud or to do pilpul, to dwell in the Torah just for the sake of understanding the Torah, they are exempt from. So therefore, that's why when the rabbi, you know, passes away and his wife is alive, you still have to respect the rabbit's sin, but then it only becomes a rabbinic mitzvah to stand up in front of her because the husband doesn't exist anymore. So anyways, Rav Ovadia says, it's not clear, but there's a Sefer Hasidim. The Sefer Hasidim says, So the Sefer Hasidim, Rabbi Yehuda Hasid, holds that for an elderly woman, you also have to respect her. A woman that's above 60 years old. Of course, women shouldn't, their true honor and prestige is like a princess, that she's more modest and hidden. So, also the Sefer HaChinuch writes that this mitzvah happens for men and women. So, it seems that just like we have to respect our elders, elderly men, it seems to say that the Sefer Hasidim says it's the same thing for elderly women. And they asked the Rabbi, Yehud, Rabbi Yaakov Hagiz, the Hilchot Ketanot, one of the great poskim that wrote Teshuvot. And he says that uh, it doesn't seem logical to him, but he says the Sefer Hasidim writes that you have to. So it seems that he concurs with the Sefer Hasidim. And the asked Rabbi Yehuda Ya'ash, Rav Avadia brings here, Pasak Bishut Shechovalakum Ipnezakana Bashanim. So the Shalot Teshuvot, Bet Yehuda holds, you have to respect and get up in front of an elderly woman. And same way that you have to get up in front of a Talmud Chacham. Because the Gemara in Kiddushin, Daf Lamid Bet, says that Seva. Elderly is any type of elderly, so why should it make a difference whether it's an elderly man or an elderly woman? So it comes out, Rabbi Vadya says, that it should be the same thing. A woman that is very knowledgeable in Torah, you have to respect her and get, in, get up in front of her. And they bring from the Pre Chadash, one of the greatest and most sharp and genius. 
and pilpulistic of the Sephardic poskim is Rabbi Hezkeya di Sala. He's the Prichadash, the Rabbi Yitzchak Ataya brings that Venira um, Pashut. He writes that in his Ksav Yad Shechayevim Lakum Yifnei Mitzat Chochmata, a woman that puts sweat and tears and is very knowledgeable in the Torah, you have to respect her Torah. Even though she, her, her obligation to study Torah is not as much in the same capacity as a man, but since exactly he uses the logic of Rav Avadya, since there's a mitzvah to stand up and respect the rabbit sin, so the same thing for a woman that is a, a very knowledgeable in Torah, they make a kal v'chomer, kol shechen, for sure more, because she has actually proactively, on her own accord, deserves that honor and prestige. Now I just want to make something, uh, clarify something here, and that is that the shach in Yore De'a writes, just to clarify the parameters of what Rav Ovadia Yosef is saying, basically Rav Ovadia Yosef we're going to see the Ben Ishchai and the Arizal argue on this, but the Ravadia Yosef says a female Torah scholar, Rebbe everybody agrees you have to respect, but a female Torah scholar is this little bit controversial and original uh, idea that Ravadia is saying, you have to respect her with all the same laws of respect for a male Torah scholar, but um, which Torah, who's considered, a, who's classified as a Torah scholar? So there's two conditions, the Shach says. First of all, this person has to be much more knowledgeable than the regular people in the synagogue, in the community. So he's, you know, everybody recognizes that he's not your average Joe Shmo. So that's the first condition that a person is a Talmud Chacham and everybody knows his knowledge is more and then the second condition is Ra'ui lahilamit mimenu. If you again know the same amount of knowledge as him, then you don't really, you just have to do hidur, which means a little bit, you know, show that you want to get up, but you just slightly move. But only if, first of all, he's much more knowledgeable than the regular people in his community, the average Jew, and secondly, he's so knowledgeable that it's, um, incumbent upon you to go learn from him. He knows he has more knowledge than you on also on a, on a personal level. Both, both compared to the public, he's more knowledgeable and privately, specifically micro and macro. Micro means that his knowledge is also more than you specifically, then you have to get up. So therefore, if there's a rabbi that knows more than this female Torah scholar, of course, if she walks into the room, then he just maybe slightly needs to uh, move a little bit like this. But not that um, to stand up in front of her because if the rabbi is more knowledgeable than her, or any Talmud Chacham or Yeshiva Bachur, then obviously the second condition of the Shach, that on a micro level, this person has to be worthy of being your mentor because he knows more and he could teach you. He knows stuff that you specifically don't know wouldn't apply. Now, the Minchat Chinuch also concurs with this idea that a female Torah scholar needs to be respected. And basically, the Ben Ishchai brings from the Arizal that this doesn't apply. If you look in the Ben Ishchai, Rav Po'alim, and also he brings from the Arizal in Parashat Kedoshim, it says that you should fear God. So the Arizal, Kabbalistically, for some reason, um, and I must confess, I'm not a Kabbalist, the Arizal and the Ben Ishchai say that um, a female Torah scholar or a female woman that is 60, 70 years old um, for, for deep Kabbalistic meanings they do not need to be. Um, of course, of course, now let me clarify something. 
of course, in the in the they they deserve the respect of the community because they're, but the same parameters as like having to get up in front of them. What halacha, what in Shulchan Arach requires to respect them in the like um, getting up in front of the rabbits and the rovs or the Rosh Hashiva's wife. That's what the Arizal is talking about. That um, and the Ben Ishcha, if you look in Parashat Ki Tetzeh, Halacha 15, he concurs with the Arizal, obviously, because the Ben Ishcha would uh, is is a, is a, is a um, one of the greatest Kabbalists, and does uh, his whole book of Halacha Ben Ishcha, he synthesizes Kabbalah and Halacha, and which Kavanot you should have in Nishmat and all these things, so. Rav Avadia says that um, it's true what the Ben Ishchai is saying, but this is a Torah law. See, Safek Deoraita Lechumre. One of the most important things to realize about Halacha is whenever we're in doubt about something that is from the Torah law, like Shabbat, it was instituted by God, then when you're in doubt, you should side on the more cautious side and be machmir and be stringent. So here Rav Avadia says there are Rabbi Yehuda Hasid and many the Minchat Chinuch Prichadash. There is a great great poskim that say it's the same. You have to respect them, and the Benishchai Kabbalistically says not. So Rav Avadia says that uh, his position is is that a female Torah scholar and a female Elderly women is should be uh, respected, and you should get up in front of them just like a male Torah scholar. Now, for sure, this requires that when a female teacher, like a mora, in Bet Yaakov, you should uh, respect her because the Gemara in Bava Metzia, the flag. Amud Aleph says that, you know, there's a famous halacha. Let's say your dad's wallet fell into the river and your rabbis, your teachers, your Torah teachers' wallet fell into the river and you could only fetch one. Which one takes precedence? You have to go and fetch your rabbis, your Torah teachers' um, wallet. You know why? Of course, one of the Ten Commandments is to respect your parents. But your father brings you into this world. Your Torah mentor teaches you the path to heaven. So he's giving you eternity. So therefore, Rav Avadia says it's incumbent upon all the students that when their principal, female principal or mora, female Torah teacher comes, they should stand up in front of her completely like this, just like they do for their, uh, the Rav, because their Torah teacher, their Mora, is really teaching them the path and the ethics to bring them to the heavenly court, to bring them, giving them netzach, giving them eternity. And it doesn't matter whether she's getting paid or not, Rav Avadia says. It, the mitzvah is because the benefit that you're getting from her. So, Lefichach, Rav Avadia writes, it's also, it's very disrespectful and prohibited to call your mora, your female Torah teacher, by her first name. Because the Gemara in Sanhedrin also says that if you call your rabbi, you disrespect your rabbi and you call him on a first, first name basis, the Gemara in Sanhedrin, God forbid, it's very dangerous and harmful to your spiritual well-being and to your future if you call your mentor by his first name. You don't say Rav David or Rav Moshe or Rav Yosef. And that's clear, clear in halacha. So whenever you're addressing your female superior Torah teacher principal, you should always say Mrs. or Mora, Devora, Sarah, so on and so forth. So just to recap, 
רב עובדיה רייצן יחווה דעת חלק ג' תשובה עין ב', which is very interesting and original halacha. I didn't know this, I, I, uh, one of my colleagues brought this to my attention. מצווה לקום מפני אישה חכמה, so a female Torah scholar that is very knowledgeable about Torah נביאים כתובים and מדרשים and halachot. You have to get up in front of her and stand up. And laziness is not a solution. And same thing for a woman that is at le- uh, 70 years old. Because you know there's a machloket. According to, in, in halacha, it says that uh, what's considered elderly, 70. The Ben Ishchai says that for a male, it's 60. So I guess in this case, Rav Avadia says that uh, since already it's a little bit suffix, for a 70-year-old woman, we get up. And for sure, a woman, a female, should respect her female Torah teacher and you should give her, like in Israel, where everybody runs the, rides the bus, you should give up her seat and f- for the, have a, uh, your teacher, if you meet her up with her on the bus for her to see, teach, to her to take your seat. And may Hashem help us always to respect the Torah because the Gemara in the end of Makot writes, how foolish are the Babylonians that they get up for the real Sefer Torah, but they don't get in get up in front of the living Torah, which is the Torah scholars, the Rabbanim, the Talmud, the Chachamim,